How's it going, everybody? In this video, I want to talk about how the impact of the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association Supreme Court Concealed Carry case may result in 2022 becoming one of the greatest years we have ever seen for our rights to keep and bear arms in our nation. So let's talk about this. But real quick before you jump into this video, if you think it's time for the Supreme Court to finally once again uphold our right to keep and bear arms, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I just want to take a moment real quick to thank everybody who wished me a Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Holidays, all that over the last couple of days. I hope everybody had a great Christmas Eve, a great Christmas, and I hope you guys enjoyed your time with family and friends. I really appreciated all the support you guys have shown me, and I just, again, want to reiterate, kind of just looking into next year, things that are going to happen. I just been reflecting on this year and the last couple of years that I've had here on YouTube, and it's been amazing all the support you guys have shown me. It's been really amazing, the community we have built here and just all the support and focus that we've created on this channel for our Second Amendment rights. So again, I just want to take the time to thank you guys so much for all the support you've shown me. And also, I just want to take the time to say if you guys would consider subscribing, if you haven't subscribed to this point, it does really help the channel. And if you do subscribe and you join this community, it's an amazing community and here we focus heavily on our Second Amendment rights. So again, just thank you to everybody who's shown me support and I just cannot thank you guys enough. Also, I want to let you know that this content is powered by the Firearms Policy Coalition. So head on over to joinfpc.org to help support the Second Amendment cause. Thank you again, Firearms Policy Coalition, for supporting this channel. So like I said in the intro, in this video, I want to talk about how the impact of the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin Supreme Court Concealed Carry case may result in 2022 becoming one of the greatest years we have ever seen for our Second Amendment rights in our nation. This case is really important because it will likely become a landmark case that sets Second Amendment legal precedent for generations to come. Now, for those of you who are not aware of what is going on in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin case, or you don't understand why it's so important, let me explain real quick. New York State Rifle and Pistol Association is a challenge to the state of New York's concealed carry permit requirements. The state of New York requires a person to provide proper cause to be issued a permit to carry concealed. The issue is that the state does not consider self-defense a proper cause, and therefore on that justification alone, people have their permits denied. Essentially, a person has to distinguish themselves from the average person to be granted a permit to carry concealed. So the whole question in this case is whether the state of New York violated the Second Amendment with their May issue licensing scheme that does not treat self-defense as sufficient justification for a permit to be granted. Now, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments in this case which is important because it's one of the first Second Amendment cases the Supreme Court has heard and will rule on in a really long time. For reference, there are really only about four uh, Supreme Court decisions that touch directly on Second Amendment issues. Those cases are Caetano, Miller, McDonald, and the landmark Supreme Court decision in Heller. Since there is just a handful of cases the Supreme Court has decided, the area of Second Amendment law really just has not been fully flushed out. This has resulted in a lot of lower courts essentially running amok and making up rules and decisions as they go. What this often means is that liberal-leaning circuit courts like the Ninth Circuit and states like the state of California always shape their rulings so that the Second Amendment violations that are in place are greenlit by these various courts. Because of all that which I just mentioned, one of the major impacts the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association decision will have is that if the Supreme Court affirms that text, history, and tradition is the legal analysis, that must be used when looking at Second Amendment cases, that would trickle down to all these other lower courts that have refused to actually use that analysis. All the parties and many of the justices during the oral arguments in this case appear to acknowledge that text as informed by history and tradition is the correct analysis when dealing with Second Amendment issues. For example, in response to a question asked by Justice Gorsuch, the uh, New York representative, the attorney representing New York stated, I think our view is that courts ought to follow what we understand to be the lesson from Heller which is that you start with the text, history, and tradition, and when those sources provide you an answer one way or the other, either that the law is valid or that it's invalid, you end there and that's the end of the inquiry. This is a drastic change in perspective that states like California and circuit courts like the Ninth Circuit have refused to use. The state of California has argued in all of their cases that balancing of interest is what courts should use, not text, history, and tradition. Currently, the Ninth Circuit has established what is known as the two-step approach. In this type of analysis, the court first asked if the challenge law affects conduct that is protected by the Second Amendment. If it does, then the court moves to step two to determine what level of scrutiny should apply. Well, during oral arguments, you had Justice Gorsuch ask a few times what they should do with lower courts like the Ninth Circuit, 
who have used tiered-based analysis in the past instead of text history and tradition. The petitioner's attorney actually stated in response to this, I think if it wanted to, it would go a long way to correcting some of the mistakes in the lower courts to say that text history and tradition is the test, not part of the test, but the entire test, both inside and outside the home. If the Supreme Court further establishes that that type of analysis is correct in this decision, that it's text as informed by history and tradition, that would open the floodgates for relitigation of countless Second Amendment cases that to this point have been incorrectly decided. For example, gun control laws like California's handgun roster have been upheld using balance of interests. Uh, well, that was clearly incorrect, and this decision would lead potentially to that issue being relitigated and the correct type of analysis then being used in the case. Also, the Ninth Circuit's rulings in Young and Pena, which found under the Second Amendment you have no right to carry a firearm outside your home for self-defense, can also be rechallenged because the Ninth Circuit, again, refused to use text history and tradition, but use the Ninth Circuit's two-step approach. So in 2022, with this decision, the Supreme Court can set the foundation to correct all these Second Amendment infringements that to this point have pretty much gone unchecked. Even more directly, the Supreme Court shooting down the New York May issue scheme would also lead to an important Second Amendment change in 2022. The decision would force every other state with a May issue licensing scheme to have to shift to, at the very least, a shall issue scheme. Ideally, constitutional carry should be the standard, but in 2022, we could kind of take a step towards the right direction by getting rid of all these May issue schemes that still are in the US and kind of just setting the baseline as shall issue. And then from there, we can start moving towards constitutional carry in more states. This would be big for people in various states and counties like the state of California and counties like LA County and San Francisco counties, uh, because to this point, people in those counties under these May issue schemes where discretion is given to sheriffs and local PD, a lot of these people just cannot get concealed carry permits. It's pretty much impossible. But if these states are forced to shift to shall issue, that would mean that finally concealed carry permits are open to all these people. Then there are also the downstream impacts that this decision would have on other cases in 2022. There are currently multiple cases on hold at the Supreme Court level waiting for the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association decision. The Young Open Carry case, the a &J RPC New Jersey Magazine ban case, the Apache and Bump Stock case, the likely Duncan California Magazine ban case that is gonna be going to the Supreme Court as well. All these cases are seeking Supreme Court review. A lot of these have been put on hold. Some of these other ones will likely also be put on hold and they are waiting for the Supreme Court to rule in this case. Beyond those that are currently up for Supreme Court review, you also have other active cases in circuit courts that are also really important. You have the Miller and Rupp cases, which deal with California's ban on so-called assault weapons. Then you have the Rody case that deals with California's ammunition restrictions. Um, all of those cases and, and also cases in other circuit courts as well will be impacted by this New York State Rifle and Pistol Association decision. Likely what you will see in those cases that are currently still in these circuit courts, you will see supplemental letters be submitted to those judges in the circuit courts saying, hey, the Supreme Court just issued this decision. In light of that decision, you need to look at this type of analysis that they established, or you need to look at this variety of language that they included. And hopefully that new analysis, that new language, that new decision by the Supreme Court will help to correct and actually force these lower courts to finally rule the correct way, which to this point, they have refused to do. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos in this type of 2 news. Thank you to everybody who's liked, commented, subscribed, who's hit the notification bell, who shared these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel. And again, like I said, the intro, and I've said kind of in the last couple of videos, in hindsight, just looking at everything that's developed with this channel, I cannot thank you guys enough. You guys have shown me so much support. I never would have thought any of this was possible. I never thought I could kind of live out my dreams, talk about the Second Amendment, advocate for our rights, do Second Amendment law. And really a lot of that is because of you guys and all the support you've shown me. So thank you so much for all of your support. I hope you guys all had an awesome Christmas, enjoyed your time with family and friends. I hope you guys have a great um, New Year's Eve. And as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to stay with Built Barm Scholars, the nation we maintain Barm Scholars.